Enums, or enumerators, are a simple but very useful part of Python. They provide a very easy to use and understand way to bring more structure into your program. And the more common use cases include adding the element of choice or tracking your state. But if you take advantage of some of the different variants of enums, they can be used to do some really powerful things as well. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what enums are, the different variants, and how they can be used. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. But with all that out of the way, let's, for a change, talk about one of Python's simpler aspects. Actually creating an enum is very simple. So what we need to do is to from enum import enum, and then whatever enum you want to create, you just make it inherit from enum. So we can do class game state as an example, and then we get it to import from enum and everything's fine. This is now an enumerator and the enumerator values that you put on it, you define as class attributes and you typically define them in uppercase. This is just the standard. It's not necessary, but you would do, for example, playing equals zero paused equals one and game over equals two. And these indicate uh, different states. So the game could either be playing, paused, or in a game over state. And then if we do if name equals main down here and print game state dot playing, uh, then we just get this back. It's not particularly helpful. If we get the type, we'll see that this is actually an enum value itself. And you could use this in an if condition to say, if the state is game state dot playing, then do this. If you wanted to print out something or do other things with the name and the value, then you could do, if we do game state dot paused dot name to get just the name of it and then print game state and we'll use game over dot value to get just the value. If we do this now, we get the enum type, which is printed. We get the name, which is just pause, so that's this side, and then the value, which is this side over here. And you can use dot name and dot value to just get these values. You don't have to use dot notation when accessing an enum. You can, if you know the value, uh, instantiate the enum using that value. And if you know the name, you could also uh, use dict accessing. So if you had the name uh, or the state as a string, for example, you wouldn't have to do some weird get atra thing. You could just access it like a dictionary. And now we get game state or paused and game state or playing as you would expect. Now in this particular example, we've used zero, one, and two as the values. In some instances, this one included the actual value of the enum is immaterial, it doesn't matter. So you could, if you wanted to, use auto. And now if we set this to use auto like that, instead, it will just use an appropriate value. In this case, I believe it still will use naught one and two. And we can actually verify that. Oh no, it uses one, two, and three. There we go, so it starts on one, if you do it like that. But it just makes sure that all the values are unique and that you don't make any typos and that it if you change anything, it all works fine and everything. If the value does matter, so if you are ever going to instantiate it like this, you can see we've actually got game state or playing down here, then you probably do want to set values because if we were to change this order of operations around and say paused was the first state, then doing game state with one now uses pause, not playing. So this behavior has actually changed. So if the value does matter, you want to explicitly set it if it doesn't matter, i.e. it's just a series of choices, then you can use auto. Ordinarily, enums are fairly dynamic, so the actual type doesn't matter. I could set these values as strings if I wanted to. I could set them as objects if I wanted to. But if you did know what type of value your enum was going to have, you could unlock some extra functionality. So if I create this file uh, here called catacoos.py, and then I copy paste this absolute monstrosity, uh, so this is a real world example for those that have used the Open Trivia DB API. Uh, these are all the categories that you can select. And yes, they do start from nine. And so in this case, the values are necessary. Uh, but you'll notice that every single value here is an integer. It's not dynamic at all. So we can import int enum 
and then set this is int enum here. And what this allows us to do, and this is not necessarily useful in this exact situation, uh, but if we were to print uh, category dot general knowledge plus category dot geography, so and then run that, we would get a total of 31 because we've taken the general knowledge, which is uh, category number nine, and then geography, which is category number 22, and we've added the values together. If this was a normal enum and not an integer enum, it wouldn't be able to do that because it doesn't know for sure that all the elements are integers. So in situations where you would want to um, potentially do value comparisons, or maybe you, you would want to add multiple values together, then you would want to use int and then it accesses the value directly rather than the enum itself. And you could add this functionality if you did a dunder add here, but this int enum does it for you and assumes, okay, you want to add these enums together. That means you want to add the values together. You can also do this with strings as well. So if I were to create a file called colors.py, enough if I were to paste this in, we have an enum with all the uh, all values of string. And if we were again to add them together, then it just adds them together like that. We do also have all the string attributes, so we can do a case fold. Uh, we can do we can check if it's an alphanumeric character. We can check if it's a digit character because we know that the values are strings. And so when you access the enum, it just goes, okay, you want the value. And then we can do these things on the value directly. I should say if it was a normal enum, you could still do this. So you could do, you wouldn't obviously wouldn't have them on. Let me, I need to import that. You wouldn't have uh, these things on the enum itself, but if you did do .value. you could still do them. Uh, Cause string enum came about, I think in Python 3.11, in enum was a bit earlier. But if you're using an earlier version of Python, you can still do this uh, just by explicitly calling dot value. Another enum type and the final one I'm gonna show in this video is the flag. And I'm gonna do a little bit of copy pasting here because this example is quite involved. Uh, but if we would have some run flags here, um, and this is sort of emulating a CLI in a way. Uh, so you have uh, no uh, run flags, which is the default. You can have a uh, verbose mode. You can have a build mode, which will build whatever you want to run before you run it. You have a dry run, which runs it in a mode where nothing changes. And then you have a debug mode, which for example, say activates both verbose mode and dry run mode. And ideally, it doesn't enforce this, but ideally flags would need to be binary characters. And this is the way that I just prefer to do them. So one less shift zero is one, and then you've got two, four and eight. And this just means that you can activate multiple modes at once and it won't get confused about what's activated and what's not. So if you were to activate uh, the both mode and build mode at the same time, you'd get a value of six. If you, if dry run was set to a value of six, then that would activate dry run mode when you wouldn't want it to. This is why you can do this. And then this pipe character is what's used to combine multiple flags together. So again, debug mode, we set the post mode and dry mode, uh, dry run mode turned on. The function here, which I'm going to copy paste and then walk through is simply just a run function. And it takes a simple, uh, sorry, it takes the flags as run flags. And then by default, we have no run flags. We just want to run it as normal. We create a logger. And then the first thing we do is we check to make sure the verbose mode is enabled. And this is the syntax you would use to do that. So this is a bitwise and operator, and it essentially makes sure that all the bits for verbose mode are on in flags itself. And if that's true, then verbose mode is enabled. It could mean that other modes are enabled, and this is why we use this binary, um, or sorry, power of two numerical system here for the values. And actually auto might do this power of two system. I haven't checked that with flags. Uh, but this is why we do it. So if it's true, then we set a log into the bug. If we have the build mode on, then it just does some extra stuff. So you're building, this might take a while and it sleeps and then it will run it. Uh, and then literally the only difference between dry run and not is the logging message here. And then we run it. <laughs> we simulate running at the very least. And then we log to say it's complete. So if we 
Uh, actually, I'll, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to do it if name double equals main. And if we run just in normal mode for now, uh, do run flags, and then we get an info log to say that it's running. So verbose mode isn't active, so it hasn't done this. It's not um, running in build mode either, so it hasn't logged any of this. It's just run this. Dry run mode is not active, but they only have debug logs. And as verbose mode isn't active, it's not printed them. So it just says running and complete. If we were to change this to be flags equals run uh, flags dot verbose, it comes out with a little more information. It tells us that it's not running as a dry run because the bug mode is now active. We can then combine this in run flags dot build. And now it will have this uh, debug mode and it will build it before we run. So we've now activated some extra functionality. And then we could simply do a uh, debug mode here. And now you'll see it's turned on the verbose logging and it's running as a dry run. So it's activated this logging here because the dry run mode has been activated. And this is what this can do. So you can actually set these within the enums itself. So you can have shortcuts that activate multiple modes at once. So that is a basic rundown of enums and all their different types. Let me know in the comments what your favorite type is. I think mine is probably the flag. It's proved quite useful in very specific situations. And you can do some really cool things with that one. If you want to see other ways that Python is awesome, I have a full series dedicated to it called Python is Awesome, believe it or not. A link to that will be in the end card, so you can click on that if you want to watch all those. But I'll see you next time for whatever we do next.